According to Bloomberg, China should aim for at least 5% growth in the gross domestic product in 2023 and move urgently to lift the economy from its current slowdown. Assuming China can largely or entirely eliminate the impact of the pandemic in the first half of next year by implementing various economic measures, in that case, real growth could be higher than 5% in 2023, according to Liu Shijin, a member of the People's Bank of China's Monetary Policy Committee, in a speech at the Zhaixin Summit in Beijing on Friday. The primary need now is to get economic growth back on track and within a fair range, he said, adding that the present expansion rate is too low and harmful to long-term development goals. A prolonged downturn will harm productivity and the yuan exchange rate, and cities that remain closed will suffer long-term economic damage. According to Liu, favorable conditions are improving due to recent actions taken to minimize COVID-0 regulations, economic impact, and alleviate the property downturn. According to Liu, the country should aim for 5% average GDP growth from 2022 to 2023, although reaching that level this year will be tough. The government has reduced its official GDP target for this year to about 5.5% due to a severe slowdown in growth, with economists polled by Bloomberg estimating only 3.3 for the year. To fulfill China's aim of becoming a medium developed country and doubling per capita GDP by 2035, the economy must grow at an average rate of 4.7% until then, according to Liu, who added that it would be challenging. Improving overall productivity is another option to meet the 2035 target. According to him, doing so would cause the UN to increase against the US dollar similar to what happened in Japan and Germany in the two decades after the 1970s. In October, China's economy experienced a massive decline as factory output increased more slowly than predicted. Retail sales decreased for the first time in five months, reflecting weak demand at home and overseas. And a global recession risks are rising. The world's second largest economy faces several headwinds, including protracted COVID-19 curbs, global recession risks, and a property downturn. In a sign of persistent weakness in the sector, data on Tuesday also showed property investment failing at its fastest pace since early 2020 in October. The gloomy report presents a challenge for Chinese policymakers as they navigate the $17 trillion economy through turbulent waters after recent measures to loosen some COVID regulations and provide financial assistance to the struggling real estate business. October activity growth broadly deteriorated and fell short of market expectations, indicating a bad start to quarter four as a worsening COVID situation. Prolonged property slowdown and weaker export growth more than offset sustained policy stimulus, Goldman Sachs analysts said in a report. Industrial output increased 5% year-on-year in October, missing forecasts for a 5.2 increase in a Reuters poll and slowing from the 6.3% growth reported in September, according to the National Bureau of Statistics data released on Tuesday. Retail sales, a measure of consumption, decreased for the first time since May when Shanghai was shut down. Sales fell 0.5% compared to a 2.5% increase in September. A week-long National Day holiday had minimal effect on consumption in October, which is usually a strong month for domestic travel. COVID outbreaks are creating trouble in the pandemic vulnerable services sector, especially the restaurant business. According to the NBS data, China's catering income fell 8.1% in October, following a 1.7% dip in September. In response to the weak data, investment bank JP Morgan revised its year-on-year -year GDP forecast for China in the fourth quarter to 2.7% from the prior 3.4%, while Citi also trimmed its forecast to 37 from 4.6%. Domestic COVID containment measures were placing huge pressure on the economy, said NBS spokesperson Hu Linghui, adding that downside risks from the global economy were rising. 
The impact of the triple pressure on economic operations is increasing, Fu said at a news conference in Beijing. These pressures include falling demand, supply shocks, and weakening expectations. Despite Beijing's decision to reduce some COVID restrictions, the economic picture remains bleak, according to Zaishun Huang, an economist at Capital Economics. With exports falling, the property industry continuing to be weak and the zero COVID policy likely to last longer than many expect, the near-term picture is bleak. Despite the poor results, Chinese markets climbed on Tuesday on hints of decreasing Sino-U.S. tensions following a meeting between U.S. President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping. At the same time, Beijing's recent supportive measures boosted optimism, and property investment is also falling. According to Reuters calculations based on NBS data, real estate investment declined 16% year-on-year in October, the biggest dramatic loss since January-February 2020. In September, it fell 12.1%. Real estate sales by floor area fell 23.2% year-on-year in October, the 15th consecutive month, as buyers were hesitant to take on more debt as the economy slowed amid lengthy COVID limitations. China's property sector has slowed significantly as the government attempts to limit excessive borrowing. Chinese property stocks and bonds soared on Monday after Chinese regulators unveiled a strategy to boost liquidity on Sunday. The Chinese financial regulator announced Monday that it would let property developers access some pre-sell housing funds in the latest attempt to ease liquidity. New domestic demand boosting strategies are required to fuel China's unstable recovery. Sluggish consumption and faltering property investment remain dawdlers due to still weak household income and economic growth prospects, said Bruce Pong, chief economist at Jones Long LaSalle. Fixed asset investment increased by 5.8% in the first 10 months of the year, exceeding estimates of a 5.9% increase and 5.9% growth in January-September. Hiring remained low as businesses became more concerned about their finances. In October, the national survey based on employment rate remained at 5.5% unchanged from September. The survey based on employment rate in 31 major cities rose to 6% in October, up from 5.8% in September. Analysts say the country is on track to miss its annual growth target of around 5.5%. Economists in a Reuters poll expect the economy to grow by 3.2% in 2022. So there you have it, guys. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to be the first to watch the following videos and for more finance news, guides, and updates. Thanks for watching.